well, firstly, so, so thrilled, so thrilled to meet you. Um, having, feels like I've spent a lot of time with you in my head, um, and I'm sure um, Tom feels the same. Um, so, to, <laughs> so to actually meet you is a real, real pleasure. Um, well, before it goes too far, let me show Tom. That's the US Navy wings. Oh, wow. The real so, thing, the real McCoy. That's the thing, you did the real thing. How does Penley um, fit into your overall, I suppose, comparisons to other other rescues you've been involved with or other kind of events through your, your, your career? Person, I've lost friends before in the military before that point. But as far as rescues, uh, you know, nothing compares to that. Absolutely nothing. Uh, it, it was extremely violent that night. It, it got really rough and the sea picked up, I'd almost say exponentially. But they say it was 40 to 50 feet and it was out, out at sea. I don't think the captain on the Union Star realized how quickly he was drifting into the shore. And, uh, and we were, we have a radar on board our helicopter and my uh, observer, uh, Steve Marlowe was saying, He's drifting really quick. He's he has to make a decision like now. You know, so long story short, uh, it was offered to launch the Pen Lee, and we said, "Sure, why not?" You know, maybe it'll encourage these people to to uh, come on out. And then we then they finally said, "Okay, we're gonna start let you start taking people off." And I said, "Okay, uh, uh, what order do you want to do it?" And and uh, we'll take it. Probably the best place is right behind the, the wheelhouse. But then he said, uh, "We'll let the the women and the woman and the girls go first. And we looked at each other like, "What did he say?" You know, that was a that was probably the, the biggest shock of the evening. Was the woman and the girls go first? We had no idea there were uh, a woman and and such on board. I guess it just changes your. Uh sensation and feeling knowing that there are children uh, and a woman on board in seas that rough when you weren't expecting it. I mean, it doesn't change your behavior. Yeah, I put a much greater emphasis on getting the job done. What did it feel like seeing um, the events dramatized? How did it feel? When I heard about it and my uh, uh, good friend uh, told me, hey, you need to look at this. Anyhow, so I saw it. I was very uh, questioning how would how would you handle that? And would it be factual and all that? And I was I was blown away. It was very factual, very to the point, very people oriented, which I really appreciate. Uh, pinpointing the people that really were there and and sadly paid the price, and all the people that still support them. Oh, I strongly encourage everybody to watch it. I really do. And it's not just because of the, the Pen Lee. It's because of the RNLI. It's because of all the people and the support people that help the RNLI and the Coast Guard and others that are volunteer organizations that, that don't get paid to go out there and literally put their life on the line to help other people. And, uh, and they need that support. They really need it. If if nothing else, verbal support, but for sure, you know, physical and monetary uh, support. Uh, I guess the biggest thing is frustration, and and uh, and I'll admit I had nightmares about it. You know, I I remember remember the people very 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 intensely, like reaching out and you can't quite touch them. You know that that sort of thing. You know, not being able to. To, to do anything, you know? So here we watch a ship crash, wreck, and there's no control over helping the people inside. The lifeboat came alongside and, and they were being significantly thrashed against the side of the, the ship. And then they'd hold there for a little while and then they'd you know, back off or, or be forced by waves to, to, to move away and then and come back in and, and such. And, it was in all of, you could see sometimes that when they'd come up alongside the crew on the lifeboat, stand on the rails and they'd be thrown forward. 
you know, but they'd be reaching out or they're trying to, you know, come on. <laughs> trying to imagine you um, with the way, with the, the wind and was it very difficult to actually, the focus and concentration about being able to keep the helicopter steady in such dark weather, can't see, raining, you've obviously got this big searchlight so you can you could see not only were you having to keep the helicopter steady but also being able to look down and see what was going on uh and 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 the knowledge that yes if something hits your tail rotor the the waves the splash i mean that could have put you i mean there was probably an element of it would put us in the water immediately incredible bravery as well just uh the position you guys were in I mean, well, the problem there was when they went sideways, that put them even closer to the cliff and made it even more difficult for us. And, and there was a point there where we're in among close to the cliff and I lost sight of Tater Dew Light on the left hand side over there. We didn't see the, the lighthouse <laughs> and we thought, OK, we're fairly close to the cliff. <laughs> and uh, I guess it were. And I look back at pictures and Google map and that sort of thing and think, how how close I must have been, question mark, uh, to not be able to see the light. Maybe 10 minutes to fly, I'll say downwind back to the base. Uh, we did a fresh water wash on the engines and uh, decided to go right back out and see if we can help find where the lifeboat went to. And, uh, and we went back out, took us 45 minutes to get back into the wind to get back up there. I don't remember if it was while we were flying or very shortly after we came back the second time, but during that time frame, somebody said they found wreckage in La Morna Cove. You know, it, it became more and more hopeless as the time went on and we were going back and forth on a standard search, you know, to, to see if we could find anything from, from, the, from the coast out a couple miles and, and back in. And, and we didn't see anything and, and we would have seen something, I think. And, and it appears, this is from hearsay, I don't know the fact, but it appears that they may have rolled in and gone underneath the coastal freighter when it rolled over. And that's why nobody could find it. So, yeah. and that would happen like that. Steve Marlowe goes down uh, on the first, first time down the winch and he comes back up uh, and he says, she's wearing ruby red shoes. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> Anyhow, and the, the mother was wearing red shoes. I agree. You know, he, he, that's a memory that stuck with him and gonna stick with him for forever. And, and, and by extension, it sticks with me too. Mm. You know, but there's a real person there. Mm. You know, it's not just a number. It's not just one of eight. You know, everybody is a, it's a very real person. I'm much more of a people-oriented person now, very much, uh, very active in my church, you know, those kind of things. 40 years on, what do you look back and see as, I suppose, the legacy of... of uh such a an awful event but what do you see as is there a legacy of Penley and, and, and what would that be to you I think the legacy is to keep the memory alive but more so uh, keep people involved you know I really hope that more people watch your show 